The Trans Rights Europe map is an important point of reference for the Council of Europe's work on advancing the human rights of transgender people. The data has helped the European Court of Human Rights to compare the state of legislation in different Council of Europe member states and to understand whether there was a European consensus on matters such as, for example, legal gender recognition. One such a case was A.P. Garçon and Nico versus France. The court's judgment on this case significantly strengthened the human rights of transgender people. It ruled that insisting on compulsory sterilization surgery or treatment as a requirement for legal gender recognition violated the European Convention on Human Rights. This data has therefore been instrumental in shaping the court's interpretation of the Human Rights Convention for Transgender People. Yeah, we were actually really surprised when this news uh, happened, when we heard about it, also because no one from the trans community actually knew anything about it. It just happened in the middle of summer. But it's a very important step because before that, trans people who wanted to change their gender marker, they actually just wrote it on the backside of the form for changing your name. And now this means that we actually have a form, a form for this specific procedure. So it's a big, big step. And the biggest step is also the fact that there's now two forms, one for minors, which answered our questions of can minors in Slovenia actually access legal gender recognition? Previously, we knew of people who have, but there was no official confirmation of this and now we have it. So yeah, having forms, having documents, having actual procedures makes access to legal gender recognition a lot easier. It gives you a framework in which you know what you can actually get. It's really crucial. Hello, this is Alejandra Ortiz from Papaya Queer in the Netherlands. In the current asylum situation in the Netherlands, there is an, an updated regulation when it comes to LGBT refugees. Gender identity uh, is not included. We are included in the same category as sexual orientation. The cases of trans refugees are judged from the point of view of being part of the larger LGB community. There is no specific notations or a specific guidelines when it comes to trans identity. Trans asylum seekers, those who come from countries where homosexuality is criminalized, have an easier access to gain a refugee status that is not related to gender identity and the issues trans people experience is more related to the political situation in those countries. Even though I'm always happy about learning how anti-hate and anti-hate speech laws are implemented all over the world, here in Denmark, I think we need more than that. We need a change of context and a change of uh, justice, something transformative that makes the anti-trans sentiment in the general population to change and our lives to get better. So I believe in education, I believe in transformative justice, and I believe that learning about and normalizing trans lives are going to make things better. Today, Uzbekistan is a homophobic, country. 229-я статья Семейного кодекса не обеспечивает четкую процедуру юридического признания гендера. Транслюди вынуждены сталкиваться с психологическими, физическим и религиозным давлением.